my students <coughs> in last class we completed first unit second unit third unit that is plant cell and animal cell and today class <coughs> we are going to start the fourth unit that is plasma membrane in earlier classes in first class we discussed about cell is the basic unit of life cell is the basic unit of life so we discussed different types of cells structural and functional unit of the cell so the material passes through the cell it's very interesting to know about this the substances are passing through the cell through the cell into the body so how this materials are our substances are enter into our body or enter into the cells there is a layer is present in every cell in first lesson we discussed about the outer layer the outer covering layer is called as plasma membrane <coughs> or cell membrane another name of plasma membrane is cell membrane so in today class we discussing about this layer the outer covering layer plasma membranes plasma membrane how the substances enter through this membrane into the cell any substances if they are entering into the cell they has to go through this cell me plasma membrane or cell membrane what substances are entering into the cell what substances are going away from the cell we will discuss substance substances should go into the cell should go into Uh, should go out of the cell out of the cell so many substances are there for example oxygen in inhalation process exhalation process we see some gas is entering into the lungs some gas is going out of the cell what are they glucose oxygen glucose proteins how we will get this proteins from the food materials fats to the food materials vitamins vitamins or vitamins are two types one is water soluble vitamin another one is fat soluble vitamin water soluble vitamin another one is fat soluble vitamins minerals minerals carbon dioxide carbon dioxide waste waste there are few or some substances whether they are going inside the body inside the cell through the plasma membrane or through the cell membrane or else they are going away from the body away from the cell now you have to say that we are breathing so the two three gas entering into the lungs one is oxygen another one is carbon dioxide another one is nitrogen 21% of part of carbon dioxide 0.03 17% of nitrogen is present in the atmosphere when we breathe 
oxygen entering into the cell entering into the cell what is glucose when we take food materials they will digest into the stomach through the hydrochloric acid release in the stomach so the nutrition are observed glucose are observed glucose are observed and transport into the blood then go should go into the cell into the body proteins so it needs so plenty of proteins is there so protein c is go into the body fats fat also to needs to the eye to get fat also enter into the body some fats will be digested some fats will be digested so the more fat equals vitamins two types of vitamins one is water soluble vitamin b and c vitamins b complex thiamine riboflavin niacin pyridoxine cyanocobalamins pantothenic acid folic acid biotins c vitamins c vitamins ascorbic acid water soluble vitamins fat soluble A vitamin, D vitamin, E vitamin, K vitamin, retinol, calcium, tocopherol, phytophenol. Those are fat soluble vitamins. Vitamins are required to our body, so they go into the body. Minerals. The minerals. How we get minerals from the water and the food materials? So go into the. So go into the body. Carbon dioxide. When you breathe, 0.03 percent of carbon dioxide enters the lungs. When you breathe out, 4.4 percent of carbon dioxide go away from the body. That's so, it. Go, should go out of the cell. Go out of the cell. Waste is when you take food materials into the stomach. The useful materials are absorbed. The nutrition is absorbed. The waste material has to be sent away from the body. When we drink plenty of water, this water, the blood is filtered in the kidneys. The waste material, the waste water, including so many uh, waste materials like amino acids, ammonia, they will go away from the body through the urethra, urinary bladder, through the urethra. They should go. Out of the cell, these are the substances go into the cell. Substances should go out of the cell. Go into the cell and go out of the cell. <coughs> Next, please we'll discuss about preparation of solution. Preparation of solution. From this activity, we can see. How the substances are entering into the cell are going out of the cell. How the substances are entering into the cell are going out of the cells. We have to prepare some solution. So preparation of solution. Preparation of solution. Next one is preparation of saturated solution. Preparation of saturated solution. Which one is more concentration solution? Which one is more concentrated solution? We will discuss about this. Three solutions. First one is how to prepare solution. How to prepare solutions? There are two types of. 
3 is there in 3 in the form of this one is liquid form, another one is crystals forms, the last one is in the form of A. So the substance is present in the form of three forms. One is A, another one is in the form of liquid, another one is crystals or solid. For example, we take sugar and and water. Sugar and water. Sugar is solid or solute. You can call solute. Water is solvent. Water is solvent. Take one glass of water. Take one glass of water and add one teaspoon of sugar into the water. Take one glass of water, add one one teaspoon of sugar into the water. What happens? We have to mix it. We have to stir it properly. What happens? The sugar crystals will dissolve into the water. The sugar crystals they dissolve into the waters. Once the sugar is dissolved into the water, there is we can we cannot see the sugar crystals because it's dissolved. Then how should we know whether the sugar is there or not in the water? When we drink, we can see the taste of water. The taste of water is different from the normal water. So this is a preparation of solution. Preparation of solution. Solute will be dissolved into the solvent. Solvent is the water. Which one? The sugar is dissolving. So the water has capacity to dissolve. So it will dissolve in the sugar crystals. This is the preparation of solution. Any solution will prepare like this only. So the substance has to be dissolved into the water. This is about preparation of solution. Next one is preparation of saturated solution. What is saturated solution? It is different when compared to the normal solutions. Now take again one beaker of one beaker, 100 ml of water. 100 ml of water into the beaker. Now add 1 teaspoon of sugar into the water. Stir it well. 100 ml of water, 1 teaspoon of sugar, stir it well. The sugar will be easily dissolved into the water. Okay, that is the solution. But what is saturation solution? Again, after 1 spoon is dissolved, now we have to add 1 more spoon into the 100 ml of water. Then stir it well. It will, it will be dissolved. Until, until the crystals are, some crystals are, remains in the bottom of the glass. So when the capacity of the water is over to dissolve the crystals of sugar, if the crystals is, remains in the bottom of the glass, such type of solution is called as saturated solution saturated solutions. So we are adding the sugar solution into the water until the capacity of the water is over to dissolve the sugars. So when the capacity is over, some crystals will remain. It will not able to dissolve the crystals of sugars into the water. It will remain only. Some type of, some type of solution is called as Saturated solution. Preparation of saturated solution. Just to remember the preparation of solution, preparation of saturated solution is different. Now come on. Now we will discuss about which one is which one is more concentrated solution. Which one is more concentrated solution? So now come to the discussion. Which one is more concentration solution? Now you have to take <coughs> three beakers. To take three beakers, we are going to 
comparing the beakers which one have more concentration <coughs> a beaker b c beaker a b c beakers the first beaker is containing it 100 ml of water second one is containing 100 ml of water both one having 100 ml of water three three of them having 100 ml of water solvent is same in all three beakers now we are adding solute in the different level different level we are adding half teaspoon of sugar into the first beaker, one teaspoon of sugar into the second beaker, one and a half teaspoon of sugar into third beaker. Remember that solvent is same. We have taken three beakers. First beaker containing 100 ml of water, 100 ml of water, 100 ml of water. But the sugar we are added in first beaker, half teaspoon of sugar in first beaker, one teaspoon of sugar into second beaker, one and a half, one and a half teaspoon sugar of in the third beaker, that is C beaker. So come to the question. Add and stir it well, the sugar will easily dissolve into the waters. Now we have different type of taste in three beakers. So the which one we have added half teaspoon have a less sweet compared to first beaker, second beaker having a more tasty than the first beaker. The last one have more tasty than compare one and B, A and B because we have added more sugar into the C beaker. So the question is which beaker have more concentration? Which one is more concentrated solution? Which one is more concentrated solution? Can you guess the answer? Which one is? Obviously the C beaker. Because the water is same in quantity but the sugar is one and a half. If the water is say, if the solute is more percentage in the third beaker, if you have more solute, they have more concentration. If the more water is there, the less solute is there, they have a less concentration. But that is not the question. But then my question is, I want to, I want to convert the A beaker into C beaker, what can I do? If you want to convert A beaker into C beaker, what can we do? Very simple answer. So in first beaker, they have taken 100 ml of water. In C beaker, they have taken 100 ml of water. But in A beaker, they have taken half teaspoon of sugar. In the C beaker, they have taken one and a half teaspoon sugar. To convert A beaker into C beaker, we have added one more teaspoon of sugar into the A beaker. And now is C. One and a half spoon sugar of and level of water, one and a half spoon of sugar and level of water. But the question is different now. The question is different. If I want to, if I want to convert C beaker into A beaker, the question is, I want to convert C beaker into A beaker, what can we do now? What can I do now? It's simple, converting A beaker into C beaker, but to convert A beaker into C beaker into A beaker, what shall we do? What shall we do? So listen. So 100 ml of water, then half teaspoon of sugar is there. But here, 100 ml of water, how much sugar is there? One and a 
spoons. For 100 ml of water, 100 ml of water, half teaspoon of soda, we have to add 200 ml of water again into C beaker. We have to add 200 ml of water again into C beaker. For 100 ml, half teaspoon. Again 100 ml, half teaspoon. 100 ml, half teaspoon. 300 ml water, 1 and a half teaspoon of sugar. 100 ml of water, 100 ml of water, half teaspoon of sugar. It will equal. This is the equal, converting of equal solution. If more concentration is there, if you want to dilute it, we have to add water. If less concentration is there, we have to convert more concentration. We have to add again sugar. We have to add solute. This is the which one is more concentrated solutions. So next one. So for this preparation, we have to do a lab activity. Observation and materials in different solution. Observation of materials. Different solutions, materials, process. We need to beakers. So take, come to the procession. Take a beaker containing with a tap water. Containing with a tap water. We have to keep dry grapes. Dry grapes. Into the waters. So we have taken one beaker containing with a tap water. We have to kept one dry grapes or dry kidneys into the waters. So let it be been for two to three hours. One to two or three hours. What happens? So this dry grapes or kidneys started increasing the size. After a few hours, we are going to see the swollen grapes. Swollen grapes. What happens this? Why this kismis size is going to increase? Because the water molecules move into the cell of the dry grapes. Cell of the dry grapes. So the membrane is called as plasma membrane. So the membrane is called as plasma membranes. So the water always move from low concentration to high concentration. This process is called as osmosis. Osmosis. 
So when we compare the tap water and the dry kismis, this dry kismis is more concentration than the tap water. That's why by the process of osmosis, the molecules move from low concentration into the kismis. Due to this reason, the size of the kismis is going to start at increasing, increasing, increasing swollen kismis. Now in another beaker, what we have to do is, in the second beaker, we have to take saturated solution. Saturated <coughs> solution. Saturated solution. How to prepare saturated till solution? Take 100 ml of water, add 1 teaspoon of sugar, stir it well, and add another spoon of sugar, stir it well, until the crystals remains in the solution. Take such type of solution is called a saturated solution. Saturated solutions. Now, we have to take saturated solution in another beaker. Then we have to take the dry grapes which was swollen in the first beaker. Then don't take dry grapes. Now take the swollen kismis in the first activity. Take a swollen kismis and kept into the another beaker which containing saturated solution. Continue with the saturated solution. Now keep this experiment for a few hours. We should observe very carefully what happens. So we saw that osmosis is nothing but the molecules move from low concentration to high concentration. Low concentration to high concentration. Here when we compare dry grapes of this piece, saturated solution is there. This saturated solution is high concentrated than the kismis. High concentration than the kismis. Now we have what happens here. The water present in the kismis or grapes go away from the cell. The water present in the kismis or grapes will go into the saturated solution by the process of osmosis. Due to this, this reason, the, the grapes, the swollen grapes or the swollen kismis size is going to start at decreasing. So, decreasing. This is the process of osmosis. So, the substances entering into the cell through the plasma membrane from the high, low concentration to high concentration. So, the always molecules move from low concentration to high concentration. But in diffusion rate is different. The molecules move from high concentration to low concentration. For example, if I spray body spray here, what happens? If I spray body spray in the corner, the molecules move from high concentration to low concentration. High concentration to low concentration. That is diffusion process. That is diffusion process. Okay, friends. Today just we learn about so substances going into the cell and going out of the cell. How to prepare solution? Solute and a solvent. Solute is not about sugar or salt. Solvent is water. Preparation of preparation of saturated solution. How should we prepare saturated solution? And discuss which one is more concentration. Which one is more concentration? Finally, that is a lab activity. Observation of materials in different solution. Observation of materials in different solutions. So the materials we kept dry grapes. The substance, the molecules move from tap water. The tap water is into the cell. When kept saturated solution, the more water go away from the cell. So. This is today homework. You should write preparation of saturated solution, preparation of solution, and you should write this lab activity observation of materials in different solution with diagram. With diagram. Thank you, students.